All right, Bulls and Bears now. Coronavirus fears plunging stocks for a seventh straight day, capping the worst week for Wall Street since the 2008 financial crisis, and the S&P 500 entering its fastest correction ever. But it seemed at one point today it was going to be a lot worse for stocks. It got a little better. This is Bulls and Bears. Thank you for joining us, everybody. I'm David Asman. Let's go straight to the trading floors. Jeff Locke is at the CME in Chicago. But first, to da Jackie DeAngelis. She's at the New York Stock Exchange. Now, Jackie, we ended more than 700 points off the session lows, so that's a little bit of good news, right? Well, it was a little good news. Good evening to you, David. But what happened here on the floor today and in the last seven days was very unnerving for traders and investors alike, to say the least. Session lows today, 1,085 on the Dow to claw back, finishing lower by only 357. The folks down here were able to take a deep breath uh, having seen that. But this was all on the coronavirus. It just rattled the market. Seven straight days of selling. As you mentioned, the worst week on Wall Street since the financial crisis. All three indices ending in correction. Uh, for the week, the Dow gave up 3,580 points. And as investors rushed out of equities and oil, the riskier assets, for example, they moved into the safe haven of the U.S. Treasury. It set the yield on the 10-year, setting a new all-time low under 1.2 percent. Now, the Federal Reserve weighed in today. Uh, no rate cuts were on the horizon, but Jerome Powell said this. He told the markets that the fundamentals of the U.S. economy remain strong, but the coronavirus, of course, poses an evolving risk to economic activity, adding that the Fed will use its tools and act as appropriate to support the economy, David. So traders basically telling me they're taking a sigh of relief right now, pausing over the weekend, right. but hoping selling doesn't come on Monday that takes this from a correction to a bear market. And we actually might hear something from the Fed between now and Monday, but we'll wait and see what they work out. Jackie, thank you very much. Sure now thing. to Jeff at the CME. Jeff, of course, oil is a big part of what we're watching down there, but also gold. A lot of people calling in saying, What's happening with gold? So first talk about oil. Yes, oil first, and I got some good news for you, David. You know, things were not as bad as they could have been. As Jackie pointed out, inequities the same. Take a look at the day trade in oil. We got as low as 43.85 at one point. That was the low of the session. We closed at 44.76, so we clawed a long way back. And now in the after hours, I'm looking at the last trade, 45.26. So it could have been worse. The same true of Brent, also down on the day, but could have been worse uh, when it was over. Uh, now gold. Yeah, you ask an interesting question there. Why, in the face of the situation we have right now, isn't gold soaring as it typically would be? Well, here's a couple of thoughts on that. And by the way, gold closing today down 4.6 percent. Some people think that traders have been caught short and margin calls on their equities, their losses in equities, so they've had to sell uh, gold. Other people suggest that maybe people just don't want to be in gold. They want to actually be in cash. And of course, you know, if the economy does poorly, jewelry isn't exactly all that popular either. Uh, lastly, we talk about the potential of a Fed rate cut. We track that here at the CME by the Fed Fund Futures, Fed Fund's futures rate. And take a look at the possibility of a cut in March, at least what the futures are telling us. A 52.8% chance of a quarter point cut and a 47% chance of a half point cut. And as you point out, David, it's possible that the Fed could even do something sooner. No great indication of that. Always an important day of trading. You know it when the trash is on the floor. Looks like some blood on the floor. Actually, oh, I think no. that's just oh, coffee. No, that's no, just coffee. That's Sorry. Right. Yeah, that's just coffee. Yeah. That, but somebody's going to okay. have to have a, a big broom for that mess. Jeff, thank you. At least the dollar is king. That's good news in a way. Jeff, thank you very much. Let's bring in our panel now. Joining us today, Heather Zumaraga, John Burnett, Gary B. Smith, Jessica Tarloff, and we also have Catherine Rooney Vera here, Baltic Capital Markets Head of Research and Strategy. Thanks so much for being here, Catherine. Uh, this Thank week's sell-off brought on by intensified fears, of course, that the coronavirus spreading rapidly all over the globe. But here's what National Economic Director Council Larry Kudlow told our own Stuart Varney earlier today. Listen. Don't rule out more optimistic options. Uh, I'm sure in the U.S. and elsewhere, there will be more reports uh, of uh, coronavirus cases. 
But that does not mean that this thing is going to skyrocket uh, in North America and the USA. We still feel the risk uh, of something very bad is low. That's what our experts are telling us, and I don't think this has a thing to do with 2009. U.S. economy is fundamentally sound. So, Catherine, are markets overreacting? Well, David, let's look at the facts. We're down 12%, right? And I contend the following. If you don't think it's likely, then you might just think it's reasonable. One, there's going to be an end to the virus. We're going to get a vaccine at some point. Demand is going to be delayed, not destroyed. The Fed is going to cut. China's going to come with stimulus. And Trump beats Bernie. If I'm right, mm -hmm. with all of that scenario, the markets end higher by year end. And you start to enter the markets. You know, over the next week, I would say, I think Super Tuesday, I think we'll have some debate on this kind of contentious issue, could bring a leg lower if, in fact, we get a Sanders sweep. So I'm looking with my clients both to cover my shorts, which we did today, and then enter the markets at the beginning of next week. Interesting. Hey, Catherine, it's Heather. So you said you were looking to cover some of your shorts and maybe enter the market at some point in time next week. I've been telling uh, investors to it would be prudent to wait maybe especially over the weekend which I think I hear you're saying that as well but if and when you do buy what are you looking to buy um, it, it, what what do you think is undervalued and been unjustly sold off due to this well everything is sold off of course Heather but the S&P is disproportionately so and if in fact you think that the US economy is not on the precipice of recession you're gonna want to go um, SPX so what we covered today with a massive massive return was naked put options. We put them on over the course of January and February. Each time the, reg the market hit new record highs, we said the complacency that's baked into the markets is far too great. And at this, this point, that has been our best recommendation thus far. There's a price for everything. If you don't think the U.S. is going to recession, if you buy even some of my arguments that I already laid out, then then you are going to want to start entering the markets. I would say when you get into that bear market territory, which, for which we're only about eight points away. Well, when you look at um, you know money over time, time is money, right? You know, I agree with you with mm -hmm. respect to demand eventually coming back, but it's a question of really when. You know, there's been positive news coming out in terms of, of vaccination. I'm hearing mixed stories. It might take up to a year. That's way too long. You know, the Fed stepping in possibly in, in March, uh, doing uh, its rate cut. You know, there's a lot of things going on, but it's still a lot of uncertainty. We don't know the speed of recovery. We've been hearing new cases. We've also hear, heard stories of, you know, in terms of people dying, things of that nature and that rate. Mm -hmm. but, but, but how do you put all this together as it relates to GDP growth as far as, you know, how it, things look, at, look over the next three quarters? You're right, and the market hates uncertainty, which is why we're at this point. Um, but this does have a lower mortality rate. The, it's widely reported that this virus mortality rate has about a two percent is at two percent versus Ebola, which is north of sixty percent, and others. So certainly there's that. Um, the other point that I would mention is that you do tend to get a V-shaped recovery when you have these illness-related, um, you know, mo legs down both in the market and the economy. Look at natural disasters. Look at SARS, MERS, Zika, Ebola. Mm -hmm. In every single instance, depending on the duration, as you aptly point out, depending on the duration, you do get demand that's delayed rather than destroyed. Yeah, you know, I, I, I agree with, I guess, 95 percent of your points, <laughs> Catherine. That's pretty good. I think they're all uh, good ones. I guess the only one I, you know, about the cure, I'm not even sure, per John's point, that's important. I still don't think, and we're going to have people on the show, we actually have vaccines for SARS and MERS out there. We were in development along those lines, and they kind of petered out, and the funding went away like it normally does. It was the crisis of the day. So, you know, just like we've seen in China, they're starting to reopen factories. Maybe it just dies of its own, you know, natural causes, if you will. But I, the one thing I do want to get to is I guess I'm more in the point of you're, you think, I guess I'm assuming, this would be a V-shaped recovery. You know, a, dr a, a drop this dramatic, though, and I look back on the charts for, my gosh, almost the last 20 years, this one really stands out. I'm not sure that just given the magnitude, not the percentage, but maybe more the point drop, we go up a bit. Yeah, that's right. almost certain. We're going to have some kind no, of No, I get what you're saying. Then I think we come yeah. back and test the lows. Mm -hmm. Then I would be a buyer 
What do you think of that scenario? Look, I think I agree with you on the perspective of the velocity of the collapse. There I'll agree with mm -hmm. you. The multi-thousand point collapse, I agree. Right. The magnitude of it thus far, I differ. If you look at the SARS epidemic from 2002 to 2003, of course you saw the S&P drop 25%. Once it was contained, however, you had a two-month mm -hmm. rebound of 28%. Mm -hmm. So. Normally, unless, like, I, I kind of get the sense that you're saying there is a risk that this could be it, doomsday, you know, book of revelations, where this takes down the globe. Uh, that, I think, is No, no, um, I, 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 guess what, I guess what I'm saying is I, I, would, yeah. I, would say there's a, I would say there's a better chance right now where, where I, I would say there's a better chance at this point of dropping to the 20 percent than going up from here. Sure. Oh, I agree with you, and that's what I'm telling our clients. Yeah. I'm yeah. saying, hey, guys, at 20%, you start buying, and you start buying w in blocks, hey, in, Catherine, in big block sizes. I just want to shift gears a little bit because President Trump was just speaking out on what he says yes. is moving to markets it's just moments ago. Listen, and I want to get your reaction and Jessica's, too. It's the unknown. You know, they look at it, and they say, well, how long will this last? Uh, I think they're not very happy with the Democrat candidates when they see them. I think that has an impact. And uh, we, think, we think we're going to win. We think we're going to win easily. But Let me get Jessica in there first and then Catherine. Go ahead, Jessica. Sure. There were a lot of inconsistencies in what the president was talking about there, and I understand wanting to shift blame onto Bernie Sanders uh, at this particular moment, but Bernie has actually been having his surge for a few weeks now <laughs> since Iowa, actually, um, and it seems that this is related to the virus. Do you think it's fair of the president to be lobbing some of this onto Bernie? And I know in your opening statement you did mention fear of a Sanders presidency and what that is going to do to the markets, or is the president really just trying to hide from his own health crisis, which he put up squarely at the feet of President Obama when we had an Ebola issue in 2014. Yeah, my role is not political in nature, so I'm out to make the most money for my clients and both our institutional and high net worth individuals. So my view is that if you have a presidential candidate who espouses, um, uh, you know, uh, policies that are going to make collapse four sectors of the S&P 500, Jessica, that comprise 60 percent of that index, then yes, I think you will get a negative reaction. I'm talking about, of course, nationalization of health care. I'm talking about um, bringing back Glass-Steagall and, and really castigating the banks. Uh, I'm talking about breaking up big tech and, of course, the elimination of fracking and, and, and traditional coal. So those four sectors are more than 60 percent of the S&P. So that was the primary reason why I recommended right. the put options and why those options, we unwound them with a 200 percent return. We got to leave it at that. Catherine Rooney Vera, what a pleasure to see you, Catherine. Please come back and see us again. I appreciate it. Thank you. Calming virus fears at home. The Trump administration and key officials briefing House members today. Tennessee Congressman and ER doctor Mark Green was in that briefing. He joins us next with everything he needs, we need to know. That's next.